hi everyone so in this lecture i'm going to cover something which is very important and that is the removal of docker from the kubernetes so starting off kubernetes 1.20 version so it was it's uh, so it was the docker was deprecated starting from version 1.20 but as of version 1.24, it has been completely removed. So how does that affect us? So normally, Docker is a part, as you see in this first um, diagram, right? So any any in any Kubernetes service, if we are using a managed Kubernetes service like EKS, GKE, then it is automatically taken care of by the provider. So if you see here, instead of using Docker, so Docker is out, right? So basically, what uh, it it helps to run the it runs the it's the engine that runs the container, but the container D is still there. Only the piece that was above it, the Docker and Docker shim, they have been removed, and and then now it's just CRI. But it's all container D. So normally it doesn't affect anyone because if you are already using a managed service, then it it's taken care as a part of the provider because on your worker node, that's where we run our pods and manager, like the control plane and the worker nodes, that's where all the pods uh, run. So that's where they need a runtime, which will be container D. But, and so if, for example, in GKE, they removed it way back and they remove it with, uh, and they provides a CLI, which was called CRI Cuttle which normally we don't need CLI, right? Because when it's already the orchestra, the orchestra is running the workloads for us, you don't need it. You can use direct cube cuttle commands. But in certain scenarios, it can affect us. So in case if you are actually using like Docker commands, like Docker pull to pull the image. So normally all that is done as part of the CSCD. So if I show you in my next so let's look at this, right? So if this is normally this is your uh, this this is how your a Kubernetes just a sample Kubernetes cluster. You have manager nodes and worker nodes. That's where your pods are running. So normally you build a Docker file, you know all these commands. So you the rem commands it you will use a Docker build to build the image, and then you will do Docker push and pull to push the image to an artifact uh, to sorry a registry Docker image registry, and then you will use pull it to pull the image in your deployment, and then sometimes most of the times you need docker on like docker desktop is more popular because most of the times you need this on your local environment to make sure that like first level of unit testing to make sure that your containers are running and then there are no issues before you go and deploy into your kubernetes clusters so but so, so normally you don't need it on the worker nodes so but if you do, right, so why will you need it? It's sometimes, a lot of times, in, in my earlier lectures, I covered a pattern which was called DIN, which was Docker and Docker. So a lot of times, if we want to run uh, something like Jenkins or uh, like a CICD use case or unit test, where you will run unit tests inside a pod, so that's where you will have to use Docker. Now, if the underlying layer, the underlying worker node doesn't have Docker, how will how will it affect it? So the, normally, there are two patterns, like Docker and Docker and Docker are Outside Docker. So if we are using Docker outside Docker, which means where we are relying on where because Docker socket will not be running. So like where the regular path where you know where live Docker will folders will be there, but where run Docker D where the Docker socket runs, that will not so will you will not be able to mount it. So if you won't be able to mount it because that doesn't exist, socket doesn't exist, then it will fail. But if you are running Docker itself inside the container, then it will it will not affect you. Similarly, if sometimes we SSH onto the nodes itself, you know, where our cluster, uh, you know, where our workload is running and we go and we want to pull certain images to do some testing. So we use Docker most of the time. Now, if you go there and if you do Docker pull, that will still work because it has, it's still there, but the runtime is gone. So like if I want to do docker images i won't see, like if i do docker ps i won't see anything because everything is now run by container d so docker will not be able to see that similarly i can't do docker run it will not be supported you will get an error which will say that you can make sure the docker daemon is running and you know the regular if the error you see when your if your docker is not installed you know that because that is gone so normally you have so in cicd we can also it's gone right so in cicd people have like you can replace it with something called Kaniko to uh, you know build your images and then you know push it to artifactory or push it to your docker registry whatever it is and then you can use in the in the clusters it can directly pull from there and then the 
underlying engine will make sure that it runs it so normally it should it's least impacting so but in case you still need it because as i was saying in certain cases we might want to log into the node or ssh into the node and then uh, you know do certain check certain things exec in the container we can't do docker exec right so stuff like that and you want to check the logs of the container not the power or a lot of things if you want to do that's not possible but it has been but there have been other tools that support like there are three tools and i have shared this web uh, this link it has it explains all of them and how to install i've used nerd cuttle it's pretty extensive it it's the i found it the best out of the all of them and i've also used cri cuttle but i uh, i use nerd cuttle, nerd cuttle more so the uh, so there are three common tools and so some so it's a simple installation it's uh the, the binaries are available over here and then so cri cuttle comes as part of the anthos gke uh, uh you know orchest the product but uh, not cuttle is not a part of any so you if you want to use Nerdcuttle, you have to explicitly install it in like eks or anthos gke clusters and for that you have it's a simple instruction you pull the binary you, you can do wget and you can download the whole binary and then you can extract it out of it and it just runs out of the box and some of the commands you can do a not cuttle pull it will do not cuttle build it's very much similar to docker it has not cuttle run you can do not cuttle logs there's not cuttle images and you can do com specific stuff on the image itself so these are so as going forward just make sure that anything that you are doing in the pod should not be sp specific to the docker daemon otherwise you know you might see issues you know and it will it will fail and you will see errors so so let me quickly cover docker desktop that we talked about so docker desktop is a community edition and for developers and for your own per you know research on your learning purposes it is um, as of now free but for the enterprise and then for the organization there is charging their license fee so the version and this is basic information about the version uh, the, i have a very older version so i need to update it but basically once you have a docker desktop you can run it so for in my case if you see uh, it's running so what it gives is the uh, if i do docker ps uh, docker right so i can so i was as i was saying docker ps was fine it's fine right i cannot see because uh, nothing is running right now but if i use docker ps dash a so there was something running in the past so and if i do so that means uh, if i do docker images these are my images now because of this now i can run right so if i want to run an image in interactive let's say i want to run alpine 3 let the latest one dot 3 i want to run it so i'm able to run it so that's the difference right if it if it was not there i wouldn't have been able to do it you know and then this is just i'm just showing because i'm inside the container and i'm just doing some stuff but I so that's docker lets you do a lot of things on your own so if i'm on my local mac i can run a container i can do my testing before i'm ready to deploy it to a dev environment or a next level environment so that's why docker is very popular and docker desktop has but there are but with the fees and everything there are also other alternatives to docker desktop so that you can explore okay so now let me try to let's try to install node cuttle on one of the kubernetes nodes so in this case i'm just running my master is already running so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ssh into the instance id because it has a public ip so i should be able to fire and then i will install but before that let's check the security so i should have i have to have a security rule so this is my security group so i need to have something that allows me uh, access to my security group so on port 22 so i don't see anything so i'll add an inbound rule i'll go there i will add to the port ssh ssh and i want to only do it from my ip so my ip and i'm going to just save it and now i'm going to see how to ssh so where is my instance uh, I need the endpoint right so when I SSH so this is running and if I want to connect to it if you click over here you say connect and it will give you the SSH so I'm I already have my key in my 
uh, folder so I will just go here and I'm going to go here but this is my EC2 instance it's not a part of the so this is my individual uh, EC2 so it will have whatever uh, it, because the AMI that I used in the image machine image that had docker in it but if this was a part of the EKS cluster that was provided by Amazon you know it was eager then it shouldn't have it but I'm um, anyway so does it have W get I'm able to I did a unzip and now I have this file the tar file so I'm just going to run tar xvf so and I will just remove the tar file so that I'm not out of space again because it already extracted so if you see there are three files and the last one is the binary so if I do not these are the commands this is what it's as simple as that just w get it and unzip it on tar it and that's where it is so like i can do not cut the images oh i'll have to add it in my path but you know i will have to like this right or and i can do not cut the, let's say i want to pull an image over here um uh, pull alpine uh, 3.18.2 To, it's going to pull it and I can run it so if I want to run it I will do not cut run uh, I have to see dash dash help let's see does it have dash it yes so let's try that dot slash not cut dash run dash it I'll find three dot eighteen dot two so a nerd cuttle run dash dash help shows so many options which you can explore so if you can see it's very it has a lot of features some of the things that like see it has cosine stuff it and i know it also allows to run the containers as unprivileged like rootless which docker doesn't so there are some additional benefits this is i was doing comparison compare docker run with nerd cuttle this is on my machine and this is on my ec2 instance but yeah something like that you can explore and see what are the features and how it will benefit you